Vinny, and welcome back to the Next Lander Podcast. I'm Vinny Caravella, joined by Alex Navarro. Well, hello, Vinny. Hello. Brad is out, unfortunately, dealing with a sick pet. Some of the worst kind of mm-hmm. dealing with there is. So sympathies yeah. to Brad as he as he uh, deals with his pets. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are here. We are. You, you and I, Alex. And not pet related, but animal related. Mm-hmm. We have talked a lot about, about the critters. The New Jersey critters. Mm-hmm. Fa- our favorite triple uh, double A soccer team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the New Jersey critters. Yesterday, there was a groundhog uh-huh. in, in in the side little part of my house in the garden. Let me promise you right now, I did not have that lady go and drop our groundhogs in your backyard. He had a scar on one eye uh-huh. and was really angry. Like, no, I don't know who this doofus is. And we have had groundhogs in around. I told you we have a little burrow under a neighbor's house mm-hmm. or something. This mf in the garden. So, in the, like, the garden is a very generous term for this little It's a place where stuff grows. Yeah. But it's got two gates, because we had put a gate there to stop deer and stuff from getting in there. Mm-hmm. It's got two gates. Squeezed in one of the gates here. I, um, Kirby, my dog, is, is no joke. We'll smell somebody in the backyard like a groundhog and just starts going at the door. So I was like, okay, something's in the backyard. Uh, I kind of looked around there, let him outside, didn't see anybody. He sniffs around and then suddenly zooms over towards that back gate. And uh-huh. is like, you know, like mm-hmm. he, he does not like, there's a fox and a groundhog, the two animals he really does not care for. Mm-hmm. This groundhog starts just huh? like looks up from like, you know, whatever he was about to do. Ooh, mm-hmm. ooh. And I'm like, oh man, Kirby, like chill. And Kirby's hackles are up and there's a gate there. So I'm like, this guy has got to get out of here. Mm hmm. So I've got a hose right there, and I'm like, I'm just going to put it on the shower. I'm just going to spray the hose, right? Like, that should scare him away. Start spraying the hose. Chill, gentle rain. Huh? <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, all right, I'll crawl to the back over here. I'm like, Did Dude. it, like, look up and do, like, the hand palm out thing, <laughs> like just, a cartoon? Like, is it raining? So, like, yeah, just like, oh, I guess it's, I guess it's raining. Like, um, and I'm like, okay. Uh, and I spray a little more. And he starts making his way towards the other end of the gate. It's not a big space. And then doesn't leave. And mm-hmm. Kirby's still there just waiting for him. And then uh-huh. this dude. Uh-huh marches up towards us starts cu- like he's gonna come out this side i need you to understand groundhogs are deeply confident animals whether <laughs> they should be or not they absolutely are starts strutting up and kirby is like ready to go he's like my dog is just ready to go to the point where i now have his collar this uh-huh. groundhog is just on the other side of the fence nose to nose with this dog that wants nothing else than to see what's inside a groundhog and so, like, I'm like, dude, you are, you have a death wish. I drag Kirby back inside. I'm like, maybe he can't fit through that other gate. I don't know. Drag Kirby inside. Put him in. Kirby's going bananas. I mm. go around the other side of the house to be like, I'll just open this gate and let him out. Go around the other side of the gate. There's this fat groundhog butt coming out of that side of the gate now. The one that he didn't leave from before. Like, you. Dumbest They're animals. doofuses, D- man. Dumbest They're- animal on the planet. No, th- no, there are dumber animals. I don't know if you've ever uh, met a koala bear, but um, <laughs> Not the person. thing about the thing about groundhogs is there is a definite unearned confidence there. Of I'm a lot bigger than a lot of the other ground rodent type <laughs> things that hang around here, and uh-huh. I'm just gonna throw my weight around. Literally, uh, it's possible this guy may have just been too fucking <laughs> unaware of what a dog even was to know or care that it was coming up on him. I, my son said, maybe he's actually a genius and knew, what are you going to do? Let your dog attack me? You're not going to do that. I'm going to walk right past you and you're going to hold that dog, you idiot human, while mm-hmm. I just walk, saunter on. I'm going to rob the bank and I'm going to walk out of here with the money. Oh, that domesticated animal is going <laughs> to get me? Really? Right. Mm, yeah. Okay. You who have no stomach for this at all, you're going to let go uh-huh. of that dog's leash? Mm, no. No, I can smell it on you. You're a nature lover. 
Yeah, I'm gonna My walk people right have been digging you. tunnels down here for thousands of years. Yeah, that's right. You people have been building <laughs> your fucking little wood hovels up here for what, hundreds? It's yeah, ridiculous. no. All right, we have a tradition. We are strong. Touch me, I dare you. Touch me. Yeah. Go ahead, touch me. I dare you. Oh, we're legion. Oh, there are th- <laughs> there are thousands. You like your house? Touch me. I'm going to yeah. walk around by. Walk around and buy. I'll dig a tunnel under it. What? <laughs> we have so many I'll tunnels. I'll pull up your fucking trees. I don't give a shit. You don't realize. Hey, nice fucking <laughs> garden, honk honk. <laughs> you may not know this, but your whole house is supported by like two twigs. We can, we can mm-hmm. just. And I can chew through those ju- like that. Just like that. Just like that. You know that water that gets in your basement? I did that. Yeah, I did that. That's my piss. That's- <laughs> I've been peeing in there all day. That's why it smells like that. <laughs> that's groundhog piss. You probably yeah. don't know. But that's what that is. Yeah. Oh man, what a what a what a weird who knew suburban Jersey had so much excitement in the uh in the wildlife land. Look, I grew up in the suburbs. I'm not unused to the kinds of animals that will just sort of crop up around wherever it is you live, but I grew up on the West Coast primarily. And there really aren't any groundhogs no. around there. Gophers. Like that's not Yeah, there's gophers, but like it's more like, you know, deer and, you know, like raccoons and like the occasional bobcat and things uh-huh. like that. Uh-huh. Uh, but like groundhogs are a fairly new thing for me. <laughs> I know they've been around for a long time, but I never really had to deal with them before. And I'm just amazed <laughs> by how blithe and totally <laughs> disinterested they are in any attempt you have to like try and jostle them or make them do anything they don't want to do. They just don't give a fuck. They really don't. No, they really don't. I, I told you we had one in our backyard who is no longer with us because it just would not heed the warnings that there is this dog in our backyard. There are dog, yeah. this it, like the squirrels. Kirby understands the squirrels are just smarter than he is. And well, squirrels so, are also fast. And the they're thing. fast. Groundhogs yeah. are not that fast. They're not fast. They're kind of lumbering. Yeah. They really are not agile creatures really much at all. Um, and so now Kirby and I just sit and we watch the squirrels eat from the little squirrel feeder. He sits there and he watches them. He'll yeah. get up. If I go to chase a squirrel out of a peach tree, he'll get up and kind of jump around. But like, I'm helping. There. Yeah. I have a cup of coffee. We just sit there and we enjoy watching the squirrels eat mm-hmm. their, eat their little nuts. They now it is. Okay. It is kind of adorable. They go like inside the squirrel. It's got like a little hatch and they go inside the little squirrel feeder and they like <laughs> put park in there and just mm-hmm. eat. It's, it's basically like a little tree house for them. And it's, that's kind of adorable. It's, yeah. That's all right. Um, anyway. That's that, your New Jersey wildlife update. Yeah. Also, it's like 95 degrees out. So Yeah, like, it's not great right now. It's really kind of miserable outside. I think all the cherries on my cherry tree dried up. <laughs> it just gave up. I went out there, and most of them looked like they had shriveled to nothing. Yeah, that that's me. I'm yeah. a cherry on your cherry tree. I was Pear outside. Pear tree's doing me. all right. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you get a pair off of it or no? Not yet. They're not ripe yet. Okay. But they're growing? They're growing. Uh, oh, and only a few of them have fallen down. But the cherries, I think those are a wash for this year. Do the squirrels eat the pears? They'll eat anything. Yeah, they will kind of eat anything. They'll eat anything you put in front of them. Like Same with the groundhogs. Dog. Yeah. Well, squirrels will eat the groundhogs. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's it. That's the New Jersey Critter Report uh, updated for you. Be- beautiful birds. Got some blue yeah. jays back there. and. uh uh, we got blue jays, we got robins, we got yeah. doves, we got all kinds of shit back there. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, video game wise, I'm gonna say not too much going on over in the Caravella households. I don't think uh, like not too much new. I should say, yeah, not too much new. I've been playing a lot of old stuff lately, and mostly I've uh, I've gotten way ever since we did that stream a few weeks ago for American mm-hmm. Truck Simulator. Uh huh. Gotten way back into it, and a big part of that is that uh, I officially went premium wheel life. <laughs> Now, okay, I was fully supportive of your premium wheel life. Can you describe uh-huh. what this entails? Because I was so, pretty excited for you. Yeah, so we had that old one, and I didn't really have a good mount for it. It was, it was that, a racing uh, wheel. It was like yeah, a, lo- it was Thrust a Logitech. Master? Thrustmaster, that's what yeah. it was, yeah. Um, nice and wheel. That was, yeah, it was a PlayStation wheel, but it worked pretty well for our purposes. But it's not really built. It's it's a tiny wheel. It's not really, you know, yeah. like a truck wheel. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to give you that wheel back. So we'll Sweet. both have wheels. That's going to be great. I told my kids, uh, um, Alex might have a, a, an extra racing wheel and they got very excited. Yeah. yeah. So you'll yeah. have the wheels, you'll have the pedals. I'm keeping the shifter because it's, it's still probably the best shifter I'm going to be able to get, but yeah, it's a good shifter. Uh, but so the wheel I got was something that's been floated into our discord by someone. Uh, I forget who it was, but whoever it was, thank you and fuck you. Uh, because I <laughs> spent a bunch of money on this. 
<laughs> I only say fuck you because goddamn it was expensive. But the thing yeah. is, it's good is the thing. It's probably a little pricier than just about anyone should be going out and paying for a truck wheel. But it is the Moza M O Z A is M-O-Z-A. the brand. Okay. Um, it is their truck wheel model, which is about the size of an actual goddamn steering wheel. Like a real, uh, like a car steering wheel, which may be a little bigger steer- from what I saw. But no, what, it's what do you about think? the same. It's okay. about the size of my actual dry, uh, steering wheel in my car. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a mount that basically you can interchange their different wheels onto it. On, onto, uh, the, so onto the, uh, onto uh, the mount. rotor. Like yeah, the, onto the rotor, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, the ra- so you, you throw the wheel onto the rotor, you mount the rotor, there is a truck mount Hell they yeah. have. Hell that yeah. is just like forty bucks, and that's that's the. It basically makes it so the wheel kind of tilts up, <laughs> yes. and you can tilt it as far down or as far up as you want. Like it's kind of yeah. a you know, it has some some range on that. And then they they have pedals. Uh, the default pedals come with two, but you can get a third one for not very much money. Uh, and so I have their pedal set up now. And the thing is, the wheel is just really fucking nice. I have to say it. It just is. So, like, the action on it, the whole thing? like The, the whole thing. The okay. size of it, the feel of it, the the button. There's a good number of buttons on the thing, but yeah. it isn't, like, overblown with buttons. Uh, you can re-decal them if you need to. Uh, and you've and, got it tilted, uh, so, like, the, the wheel is kind of in your belly-ish? Like it's yeah, a, I have it tilted up, but not all the way. It's not okay. completely flat, but it's it's definitely, like, more of an angle than just straight yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To get the little, like, I'm that sure Euro it does style truck wheel. Do, it doesn't spin forever, right? Like, uh, or does no. it? No. Okay. No, there is there is a lockdown, but it, you can rotate it like a few times around. I think you're gonna get one of those like little balls on the <laughs> like that like uh, stick on it. So you can probably really... not. <laughs> okay. But it, here's the thing: is it's just it's um it's an amazing stupid expense for a game in which I mostly just drive quietly. Look, like you- I'm not doing anything in this game that is hard or requires any of this. Most of my time spent par- playing American Truck Simulator is fiddling with my music player more than anything else. It's the it's the environment, man. Mm-hmm. It's 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 the feel. It's the feel. I, I, look, you know how much money I've spent on uh, flight s- stuff here, yokes, and and, yeah. and 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 it's just the like meditative, virtual like. Z- zone out man yeah that's that's it's and that's lovely. my version of that yeah like yours is the flying you love yeah. the flying the, the mechanics of getting yeah. in the air and all that stuff i like the ground i yeah. like the mechanics of just being in a vehicle rolling along you know a, a long stretch of highway and like uh, you know the the tactile nature of that stuff i do think and, and you have the um the eye tracking stuff now too right i do too but so this wheel also has a nub in on it Okay. Uh, so if I don't want to deal with the eye tracking, which I've gotten to a good place, I have the yeah. um, the Toby eye tracker, which is the IR based one that has like a, a little bar that just points at you and looks yeah. at your eyes and works pretty well. It works pretty well. You have to you have to tweak it some, but okay. uh, and it is somewhat setup dependent. I think if you have a big bright light behind you, it just does not work well at all. Or a big window. Yeah, or a daytime. big window. Yeah. But so I I, I managed to tune the sensitivity de- settings down to a point where it works pretty well. Awesome. But but if I just want to look back and forth in the cab, the little yeah. nubbin basically does okay. that, and that's that's just fine by me for like left and right turns and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The um the the tactile feel of the pedals and the wheel and um and the shifter and stuff. I I think it adds. I think it adds to the it adds enjoyment. A lot. It's look you and I. And and uh, a lot of people listening to this grew up in the arcade days of wheels on cabinets. Uh, oh yeah, APB was literally <laughs> one of the first video games I ever played. Yeah, and like that tactile fit, Super Sprint, you know, like mm-hmm. all the, all that stuff. Yeah, Iron Man, Stewart, like all yes. that shit. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. I'm I'm happy for you. I was very excited when you were like, should we should I get this? And I was like, definitely, definitely. You should, should get not that. say that to me. <laughs> is the thing, and I'm not saying that because like I think no, I actually I have done it. anything wrong here, but. I am feeling myself <laughs> as I get older and as my gaming habits shift a little bit in my age, shift, finding uh-huh. a little, yes, finding mm-hmm. a little bit more joy in stuff that has big, dumb, bulky controllers than stuff I just play with a regular controller. And part of that might have to do with the ongoing pains I have in my hand mm. trying to play regular video games. But, you know, I've added a bunch of stuff to my e-kit. I started playing Clone <laughs> Hero to kind of expand my drumming. Uh-huh. I've had this uh, PC light gun thing for a while that I haven't really messed around with very much. It's a USB light gun, uh, and it works, I think, with any game that requires, like, light gun technology. Okay. Um, I I think people use that a lot with, like, uh, MAME stuff with arcade cabinets that require it. And I've only messed with it once or twice, but, like, 
I'm like, shit, I kind of want to start downloading a bunch of old light gun games and start messing around because it works pretty well. Yeah, you, like you don't need a CRT. It works. Uh, yeah, right? exactly. It, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's is it perfect? I don't I don't think so, but I think it's it's it really does the job compared to most anything else. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I look. just I, I like that. I like the big dumb controllers. It's not a cost effective way <laughs> to play video games at all. But I always kind of like this stuff, and I think now I'm as I'm getting older and I'm kind of like solidifying the stuff I want to be playing with more regularity. It's that stuff. Yeah, look, you got a basement. You you paid your hundreds of thousands of dollars entry fee just for the basement. Just for the ba- <laughs> just for the basement. You that money is spent now. Fill it up with fun. Now fill yeah. it up with big arcadey silly fun and Make stuff your- that doesn't actually require an arcade cabinet. No, but could. But yeah. yes, yeah. I don't have that kind of room. Like I basically have to like put all that shit in my dining room, and I know <laughs> my partner will not stand for that kind of buffoonery. But uh, what I'm saying is, at some point, if you wind up basically assembling a cruising USA style cabinet because you have mm-hmm. built so much truck stuff, I understand. I understand. I'm just na- so now the next step is to build an actual truck cab around yes. me with monitors for the windows, so yeah. that when you look left, it's just another monitor looking left. People do that for flight sim stuff, where they build the cockpit of the plane and then stick monitors where the the windows would be. So when you look to the left, it's just another monitor that is there, and look to yep. the right, it's just another monitor. That stuff's pretty wild. And then you're going to have a fake dashboard with working dials and like an actual radio in there. Oh, Vinny, I looked yeah. at their dashboard attachments and I was like, this is too much. I don't need this right now. But I, <laughs> there will there may come a day where I change my mind about that. That's amazing. They have like full LED like dashboard things you can buy. That show like speedometers and, and speedometers, like, like you know, laps if you're doing race yeah. stuff, like the whole <laughs> wow. like info dump thing you would want in front of you. But here's the thing. I don't need that. You don't need it. Okay, here's the thing, a truck simulator. I don't know if this has or somebody has a third party thing, but is there like um a tablet extension that you can put the uh um GPS on? Ooh. I don't think there is for truck simulator, okay. but it's possible that one of these like Logitech or Thrustmaster or one of these other companies has some kind of app thing that you can attach to whatever their controllers are. Okay. Cause it, but I don't the, know. Some of the flight sim stuff ha- do have third party hook in things that are like, mm-hmm. hey, we, we can we can hook into something in the game that then projects out the um in the flight stuff it's the flight map and stuff and puts it on a screen yeah that is outside the game which i feel like if you're able to get the gps on some kind of tablet next to you that's also pretty awesome yeah um and, and take if that you can, shit off the ui and put it somewhere yes, else yeah yes and if you can interact with it and be like okay i'm just gonna click this tap this thing to change my gps and my route tell you no we're not doing that no it sounds like it sounds like we might be doing that soon also, just as an addendum here, every time I feel like I talk about my my current situation with big dumb controllers, there is a person in our community who uh, reminds me that at one point they offered to give me a steel battalion controller, <laughs> and I know that me doing this now is going to summon them again. And I uh-huh. just need you to know, I still don't have room for one of those. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I, I I I would keep it as a curiosity, but yeah. I have too much too many curiosities in this house already. I don't need another one. And then you would be obligated to bring that to a PAX. To make sure that you no, they bring contribute. their own. It's fine. You well, you have to then bring it. You have no. to bring it. You no. have to contribute. People need to play Steel Battalion, and the only place they can do it is Pat. No one needs to play Steel Battalion. Okay, I'm okay. sorry, I have played yeah. Steel Battalion. Uh-huh. It's a fascinating thing. No one needs to play it. <laughs> I wonder how if you can use that Steel Battalion battalion controller with like Kerbal or something, uh, or like the, fucking uh, Armored Core or something. Something. Yes. Uh, anyway, I love it. I am fully on board. Um, some point you are we, my enabler, aren't you? To, at some point, somebody will like merge flight sim and uh, trucking simulator, so that you and I, I could be flying, you could be hauling. We'll mm-hmm. just we'll, the logistics game with peripherals. We'll get Brad in a boat. He'll be in a hot air balloon, right? Yeah, he'll. Yeah, Brad will just be building like the servers and the computers, uh, you know. But mm-hmm. it'll be like a, some kind of physical, tactile thing where he's plugging wires in and building uh, computers there. He'll just be coding. He'll be hacking. Uh, he'll be in the back of your van hacking uh, mm-hmm. as you as you cross state lines. Uh, what we're gonna do? What I think we're gonna do? Since um, like uh, I'm still knee deep or not knee deep, neck deep, eyeballs deep. In Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I am like I, I'm. Think I'm on the last chapter. I'm, I've cleaned up everything. Really, I think I'm going to clean up 
Uh, so there's not really much to talk about there, and that's where I've been spending a lot of time with. Sounds like yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say real quick. I've also I I'm like right at the edge on uh like a dragon infinite wealth. Like I'm now at the point where they're like, hey, once you leave Hawaii, you're not coming back. Okay. So point you of no just return. go clean up. So I'm literally doing the last of my uh uh fake Animal Crossing errands and the last jobs I have around uh Hawaii. And I think after that, there's like one more chapter and I'm done. Yeah, so we'll probably have uh, closing thoughts on those, not today, but so soon. Those games we've been playing for the last six months? For, yes. yes, for 2024. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I did think that in lieu of going through that stuff, and since we're in a bit of a, a halfway point between in the year, mm-hmm. when we come back from the break, we'll go through what we've played this year, what we've enjoyed, and looking forward to what's coming out officially since we were mm-hmm. our past. Our, since some things now are in yeah, fact coming out. Exactly. Announcing what we're looking forward to. Uh, so I, I have a couple of things on my list here I'd like to talk about that are mm-hmm. uh, building maybe my you know best games of 2024 lists and stuff. We'll talk about some yeah, of that. Yeah, process started. Yeah, and then we'll talk about what's coming out. So stick around. We'll be right back with both the retrospective and the Future, the future perspective? perspective yeah stick the around the, all the perspectives yeah <laughs> stick around this week's show is brought to you by squarespace alex navarro yes Vinny caravella something we know all too well is that when you're in the middle of focusing on what you do and trying to get things done sometimes feels like you don't have enough energy or time to focus on maybe things like a website. I mean, that's for real businesses, man. That's not for the little guy like me. But it's important, and it can be for the little guy like you. You can what? swim. You can, <laughs> you can swim in the pool with the big businesses. Shut the front door, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Squarespace. Squarespace is there to help you into this big old thing called the internet and kind of do some of the heavy lifting for you as you get your online presence out there. Now you might think like, well, what do I know about making websites? Well, Squarespace has tools like their blueprint tool, which helps you get a site in the style and for the product you want up and going as quickly as possible. You can easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated SEO tools. Do you know what else they have? What? The ability to take flexible payments. Now, what does that mean? I know what that means because every time I go to go buy something, there are like seven little icons on a website now or even at a point of sale. Stuff like PayPal, Apple Pay, all those different credit cards out there. They can integrate them into your site so your customers can pay the way they want to. Everybody's got a different way to pay. Also, what are you selling on there? Did you know you could sell stuff like PDFs? ebooks, videos, put paywall content up all through Squarespace's tools. They are there for you. It's not that hard anymore. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash nextlander and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code nextlander. Remember squarespace.com slash nextlander Use code NEXTLANDER. 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Get out there. Let the internet know you're here and you're ready to go. Thanks, Squarespace. All right, Alex. Mm Mm-hmm. Here we are, and stuff has come out this year. Allegedly. It's it's true. I've got a lot of stuff tracked here. Mm -hmm. And and I'm going to read some stuff off first that I... I'm actively playing and let's just go down or I still have well, we'll ex- let's exclude Final Fantasy and like a dragon from this since we yeah. just talked about how we're almost done with those but some things that I have not finished these are games that I have played this year that I have not came out this year that I have not finished mm-hmm. that might be in like a hey we should I should continue playing this okay I have not finished home safety hotline and I would like to finish that game up did you finish that I did. It's not very long. Okay, so we were pretty close to the end. Yeah. Uh, that game seemed kind of awesome. It is. It's, it's. look, it's not a game you're going to want to replay a bunch, but I think the one time through is pretty rad. And since that came out on January 16th, 2024, I'm going to say top of the list. As of, of right now, as of right now, that that's the game to beat. 
Mm-hmm. Top of the list, 2024. Um, Pal World came out. I don't know if I'm going to play much more Pal World. That was uh, that was early in God, the year. God, that was this year. Yeah. How was that this I know, year? I know. I know, right? Um, that's why this is fun. That was this year. That was January uh, 19th is, the I think, the day that came out. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to play much more of that. I could probably move that to my no longer playing list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Enshrouded was a game that we played a little bit of. I kind of like that. It that seemed neat. I, it, it's one of those, like, you know, hunt around in an environment and build stuff games, which are never really my speed unless I'm playing with you guys. Yeah. But I did enjoy playing with you guys. So I, I'm leaving that on my, like, I'll jump back into that. That's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Helldivers 2. That was Man, this year. That is one of the games of the year. Absolutely. That is that has to well not has to be that will probably be on my personal list. Uh, oh yeah, hard oh, yeah. to hard to see that not being on there. No, there's there's very few things I can think of that might not actually knock it off. You know what might knock it off? What's that for you? I'm gonna say, uh huh, Bellatro. Well, it's not gonna knock it off the <laughs> list because Bellatro is number one with a fucking <laughs> suicide king. Like it is. That game... You think that's your game to beat this year so far? That game has ruined me, Vinny. Okay, okay. It has ruined my fucking life. (laughs) I'm not joking. This is why you're trucking now to make up money for (laughs) Bellatro money? You're on the run? I need you to understand that there are whole-ass video games I have started and then never picked up again because I thought, well, what if I played Bellatro for 20 minutes and then four hours <laughs> later I was done? Man, I so I, I played it during the demo phase. I don't think I ever played the retail version of it. Now I know... You are not alone in your Bellatro life. Oh no 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 no! Yeah, I know. I, I it is not. I am not the only life that has been ruined by this game. Yeah, but that's so. You would say probably that's your game to beat right now. Oh yeah, like I it just it's it's not even necessarily that I think it is like so much better than any other game I've played this year. It's that it has just sunk its hooks into me in a way that I. I would literally be a liar if I tried to deny how much that game has consumed me this year. Uh, okay, good. All right, so that's your that's your uh, game to beat so far. I probably so held far. Diver, probably Hell Divers Two is up there for me. I think Hell Divers is an easy top five for me. We'll see where it yeah. ends up, but that's that's where it is for me. Pacific Drive, I really liked. I kind of bounced off. I wish I liked it more. Yeah. I think there is some great atmosphere in that game. I think the actual mechanics of playing it did not. I did not love them. Yeah, and I. Th- did that come out officially? Or yes. Is that, okay, so that was an official release. That's not early I think access. so, yeah. Yeah, looks like it did, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I still want to try a couple more runs in it, um, mm-hmm. so I'm leaving it on my like to, to come back to list. Um, also, to come back to Princess Peace Showtime, I would like to just finish that game up. I, I'm pretty far in it. I don't think it would be on my list, but mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know. It's all right. I, yeah. I, it's probably not going to be in any of my, like, um, love it games, mm-hmm. but uh, it's something that I should probably finish up. It's, I'm leaving that on my, I want to I want to go back. Sure. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. I think that game had a strong start, and I kind of fell off lost of, it. I kind of did. Mm-hmm. I, my plan was to get back into Dragon's Dogma after I finish Final Fantasy, and that still is my plan if I finish it in enough time. But like we'll get to in a little bit, it's kind of a lot of stuff got announced for September. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not sure how much time is, time I'm going to have there. But uh, Dragon's Dogma, it sound like, sounds like from the scuttlebutt and talking to people who played it, you know, it kind of runs out of gas maybe a little bit, mm. which, which, uh, which is a bu- like strong start, feels really good, and then maybe runs out of gas. That's not my personal opinion because I haven't played that much of it. It's just what I mm. hear from talking to other people who've played it. Uh, also on this list that I would like to touch again, though maybe I might be done with, Children of the Sun. I got real far in that game, and I think I might actually be close to done. I just need to go back and, and tie off the last bits. What do you think? You think that would make a list of yours? It Right now, it would definitely be on the list, probably toward like the bottom five, but okay. it would definitely be on the list. I we'll see how it ends, but I, I, I re- that's a game where I really love the vibes and I like the gameplay, if not necessarily love it. I, I definitely having had fun playing it. Okay, that's the for the folks who don't remember, that's the one that's like a puzzle sniper game. One bullet, <laughs> yeah, where you like control Make the, bullet. the bullet go everywhere, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Harold Halibut. I never finished Harold Halibut, and I think I am close to the end of that game. You seemed like you loved the atmosphere and graphics of that game and maybe thought the part of where you played it was not <laughs> super exciting. I would call that accurate. Yes, yeah, okay. I, I, I think um, it's a little too meandering, a little too slow in parts. Mm-hmm. I should just knock it out and finish it. I Might as pro- well. I would guess I probably don't have more than like an hour or so even left in that game. Um, so I, I should finish that up. Um, Manor Lords, remember mm-hmm. that one? Yes, I have been sitting there staring at tra- starting that game up and just haven't done it yet. I really liked what that game is doing. Um, I, I don't know if it'll make a list of mine, but I was really digging playing that game. It's in early access. I don't know if it's supposed to come out uh, anytime soon, but Manor La- Lords is definitely one that keeps my eyeballs on. Mm-hmm. Uh, really enjoyed my time with it. Hades 2. Pretty good. I, I liked what I played so far, but I have not gone back in. in I a have. While. Yeah, I, you. Def- I think you made it the furthest out of all of us. Put the most yeah. Time I, in. I. I. I'm not that deep into it, but I try to get at least a few runs in a week. Uh, still digging it. Yeah. No, it still feels real good. Like I'm still discovering stuff. Uh, you know, the the gameplay feels just different enough from the original game. To where I can't just sort of like cheese it the way I did in the first one, <laughs> yeah. um, but it's it's good and it still feels tight, just in a slightly different way. Uh, Crow Country. Uh, this oh, is a game. Yeah, yeah. This is a game I still want to finish. I'm keeping it on my. Uh, I would like to finish this game by the end of the year uh, to talk about it. List. Um, I liked what I was playing. Uh, for folks who don't remember, that is the kind of. Um, Resident Evil by way of <laughs> almost N64 or PlayStation uh, mm-hmm. um, kind of level uh, of graphics. Uh, Crypt Master. Mm-hmm. That game's awesome. I should finish that game. That's I, where I'm at with it as well. Uh, I boot it up once in a while and do a little bit in it. Uh, still really like it. It may have worn itself a little thin you mm-hmm. know, on the mechanic, but I still really like it. That's still a really good Vincent Price impression. It's very good. Uh, those are the games that I have on my, like, Hey, I would Mm -hmm. like to put more time into these. If not just straight up finish these, obviously, like we said, like a dragon and final fantasy rebirth, not with sanding, uh, games I have put down this, these are not going to get touched, but worth mentioning here. Uh, Tekken eight. I'm probably just not going to pick it up anymore. Man, I, I played a lot of Tekken 8 the first couple of weeks after it came out, and then I kind of just never went back. But I should do that again, because I know there's like DLC characters coming. And also, I do like Tekken 8 a fair yeah. amount. Like I think that game is real good. I think maybe it just didn't bowl me over the way 7 did, because 7 really felt like a, a leap. This you one just it, feels like another good Tekken. You think it could make a... It's in a running to make a list for you? Maybe, but I'd say it's on the bubble right now. Okay. Suicide Squad. Eh, it's not on yep. any bubble. Um, let's see. The Outlast Trials came out. That was kind of fun, but I don't know if it would make a list for me. No. Uh, uh Pepper Grinder. Remember that game? That was kind of fun. I didn't like that as much as other people did. Yeah, yeah. I put it down. I, I enjoyed it, but uh, it's probably not gonna make a list. Another Crab's Treasure. Another one. Um, mm-hmm. that was on my list that I put down. Uh, not too much else here. I mean, there's some other stuff that came out that, um, that I only played a little bit of instruments of destruction, multiverses. These are things that I, I'm probably not. I, I, I reject multiverses <laughs> calling 2024 its release here. <laughs> like I just, I reject that out of hand. You, just, you, you won't stomach it. Yeah, no, I just, I, I will not sanction this. Okay. There, I'm going to go into a, a more month by month thing, but so far, those are the games that I want to finish. Those are the games mm-hmm. I have put down. Here are the games that will probably be in the better spot because here are games that I have finished that I really enjoyed. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that game. That has a good chance of being on a list of mine. Uh, That is the kind of um, Metroidvania Prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's pretty great. They have more content coming out for it. Pretty good. Silent Hill, The Short Message. Remember that? Not particularly. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be on a list for me. No. Uh, I, I don't think I enjoyed it as much. Um, Llama Soft, the Jeff Minter story. Usually those score pretty high for me. This one, this one, I don't know if it'll make a list for me. No, I don't think so, because I, I, I don't think, honestly, it's their best work. Like, I think it's good. I think there's a good stuff in it, but it is 
not as comprehensive and not as in like documentary stuff is not quite as fleshed out as I was hoping it would be. Yeah, it kind of doesn't go far enough. Yeah, uh, like it's so, cool to have a collection of all the Jeff Minter stuff, to, and that's I think that's neat. But like the actual thing, which is the draw, which is the learning about what the fuck Lamasoft and Jeff <laughs> Minter even are, it's like it's a good surface level, but it doesn't feel like it gets as deep as some of the other ones. Indica. Now that's so, a game I loved. That's a game that's cool, and I man, I keep meaning to go back and actually finish that thing. I think I got like halfway through it. Um, I know it's not that long. I just other things came up, but I I really love what that game is trying to do. Even if I don't think it's always one hundred percent successful, yeah, I like the swings. Indica has a strong chance of being on my list. Uh, Animal Well, I I didn't take the Animal Well like some of the other people i know and the internet some of the folks on the internet seem to take the animal well i'll, I'll go once further i didn't take to it at all at all okay at all uh there's a chance i might go back to it like i said i saw credits on it which maybe in animals animal wells case doesn't necessarily mean i saw the best of animal well because a lot of people said there's a lot of hidden stuff and you know a lot of things you just find i just it didn't resonate with me mm-hmm. in a way that um other folks said it really vibrated their being, you know? If it if it helps anyone here who might be yelling at me, I didn't really like Fez either. Oh, I, lo- I like Fez. I like Fez. I just, I, I think that the weird, you know, sort of like crypto box of game where you are like trying to, pe- to find all the like external puzzle mm-hmm. pieces that start coming out of it. It just is not really the way I want to play games. So like, it just I, isn't that interesting to me. I like Fez and I like Tunic. I, I like yeah. those styles of games. This did not feel like that to me. This yeah. felt... And and like I even like... Um, I did like Tunic. Yeah. So like the, the, those kind of like, hey, you're going to have to bring some outside knowledge in or there's mm-hmm. some like s- sourcing of uh, uh, community sourcing of puzzles. Like I don't mind that stuff. I don't know. Something about Animal Well... I didn't hate it uh, by any means, but just it didn't grab me. I didn't get traction on it. Yeah. Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. That is probably in my top, at this point in recording that, it's probably my top three. You've been talking that thing up, man, and you're not the only one. I really love that game. I love its vibe. I love the puzzles. Um, that's. Pr- I'm looking at the other things. Hell Divers is a pretty tough one to beat on there. Um Lorelai is probably going to be on there somewhere. It's mm-hmm. probably going to be on there somewhere. Um, if not near the top, close to it. Uh, Senuous Saga Hellblade 2. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Yeah. so It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just not that interesting. So, I, by the end of it, I was like, alright. See what you're going for? That's not the response you need from one, one of the only big Xbox games to be coming out this year, and two, a sequel to a game that was kind of on the margins of, I would say, people really loving it. Yeah. And, but also a game that maybe didn't need a sequel and that you are going to have to do a little bit of work to kind of justify why you're doing this. And I think that's maybe where I kind of ejected from it is that what they were doing to follow up on Hellblade was not really very interesting to me. I do feel like maybe they sanded some of the edges off of what made Senua and Hellblade kind of interesting. Yeah. And, and, and kind of left you with more of a epic action game and maybe less of the challenging, like preconceived notions of what it means to be an outcast or, or, you know, in this world. And their epic action game, I'm sorry, is just not that epic. Like it's a gorgeous looking construction, but as a as an action game, it is pretty by the numbers. It's it's a well, I don't know if I'd say by the numbers. I would say maybe a little thin. It's uh, very predictable. I yeah. find. Y- yeah, yeah. It. it I, I would agree with that. Predictable and like maybe not exploring too many new things, like you would have expected from mm-hmm. this this franchise. Yeah. Uh. On this list also in my completed list is Duck Detective, The Secret Salami, a very short game. I don't know if it's going to make a, a list at the end of the year. I heard year. it was cute. It is cute. It is very much, or it is in the vein of a uh, um, Golden Idol, a game that you know I love. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I think I just wanted to see more from it. It's it made yeah. just almost too short for me. It didn't, it didn't stay long enough. Um, and then uh, kind of catching up more recently here, Alan Wake. Uh, to's Night Springs. I mm-hmm. 
I mean, it's DLC, but I really liked it. It's good stuff. It's, I went uh, back and played it, and it's, I mean, look, I don't have a lot to say that other people haven't said, but I think that when they want to be funny, they are very funny, and when it wants to get a little spooky, it's pretty good. Yeah, and and they do the, f- it's them having fun, I yeah. think, with their franchise, which uh, f- for a few developers out there, you want to see them just open up, and because mm-hmm. I feel like they take the franchise along for the ride. It's not like they're making fun of it. They're all having a good time together, kind of on, in the joke of, not the oh, joke, yeah. in the universe, let's say, yeah. of Alan Wake. The bit. Yeah, the bit. Uh, so those are the games that I have marked as completed here. And just to make sure um, I'm not getting too far afield here, cause Alex, there's some stuff that you have played that I have not played. I'm just kind of scanning quickly through here stuff that maybe I didn't tag for myself or that came out earlier in the year. I'm not seeing too, too much. I think that most of the stuff I mentioned is stuff you've also touched. Mm-hmm. Um, Skull, and Bo- Skull and Bones is a yeah. game. Yeah. That yeah. I, I put down, no longer playing. Um, Ink Illuminati is a game I liked. I'm not really playing that anymore. Not really too much to talk about. Never did touch that Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons remake. Uh, that came out in February. God, that did come out already, that didn't did it? did come out already. Um, let's see. There was Hi-Fi Rush on the PlayStation, but we had t- kind of touched that. You'll already. never forget ten remakes better than Brothers: A Tale of Two Sides. <laughs> this is a year full of remakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, never touched Unicorn Overload. That Outcast, a new beginning game, just was not good. No, um, I never played Mars After Midnight, which I would like to go and play. Uh, that's the um, uh, uh, what is that device called? The uh. Uh, Playdate game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With a little a crank. I never tried Contra Operation Galuga. That was pretty on my, all right. Yeah, I'd like to pretty try that. Pretty all right. Cool. Uh, I never tried Alone in the Dark. In Alone in the Dark, the one that came out in March. Did that, anyone? I don't know. I, don't I know. never heard a word about that thing. I you, let me just double check and make sure it did come out. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah, mostly positive on the Steam reviews. All right. Um. It's still on my, like, uh, would like to check this out list. Maybe around Halloween? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, Lightyear Frontier, that's the kind of farming game in space uh, mm-hmm. with multiplayer stuff. I would like to try that. Uh, what else came out? Did you, uh, did you ever try Rise of the Ronin? No. I didn't either. Do you want me to name some of the stuff I've been playing? Definitely. Play yeah, touched? just jump in. All right, so here's some of the stuff I've touched this year that I've at least spent some time in. Uh, Regency Solitaire 2 okay. is a sequel to Regency Solitaire. Okay. Uh, I like that first game a lot. I like this one, too. It maybe didn't surprise me as much because I think the games this studio makes now are a little bit of a known quantity, but it is good uh, if you want that sort of like uh, you know Merchant Ivory Solitaire game kind of thing. Uh, open Roads. Open Roads. Which uh, did come out earlier this year, and I did finish, and my response to it is mostly, that was a nice little thing, and did not really think about it too much beyond that. Um, I am glad those people got to make the game, after all the stuff that happened at Fulbright. It just didn't hit for me super hard. Yeah, that's on my to-play list as well. I love the art style of it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I get, You know, those games live and die by their story, right? So yeah. And I think the story is good. I just don't think it really like knocked me over or anything. Okay. Okay. Um, I did play through Life Eater, Life which Eater. is uh-huh. certainly a game I played this year, <laughs> and I do admire certain things about it, mostly the narrative. Uh, I think the game itself is very light um, and fine, but it, it's really, it's the story and sort of visual novel style storytelling I think is kind of the draw there. Mm-hmm. I'm much more excited about the I Am Your Beast game, which is the one they have coming up. Okay. Um, we, let's see, I did not play Content Warning with you, so I actually have no idea how that game is. Oh, that game's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did play Abiotic Factor with you, which is in early access. That game seems like it's maybe not all the way there yet, but has some <laughs> neat ideas. Yeah. Um, I played a, a few rounds of that Killer Clowns from Outer Space game. Yeah. Fine. I, I, I had roughly the same response to it I have to all these kind of like asymmetrical horror games based on movies which is yeah they got the aesthetics <laughs> and it's one of these games like it just it, it did not, not really strike me as particularly novel approach to it not gonna make a list probably probably not 
Okay. You know what might actually make a list? I mean, what? we'll see where how the rest of this year bears out, but it could. What? Arctic eggs. Oh, I should add that to my list. I don't have it's it on It's not there. long. You could play it for a little okay. bit and be done with it. it. I'm going to end it right now. A few Arctic hours, eggs. I think. You remind the folks uh, what the setup for Arctic eggs is? You're in the Arctic and uh, you're in some sort of like post-apocalyptic like future <laughs> society of people that are kind of living in the Arctic and the only thing you can do is make eggs for people. Like you have a pan. It is kind of a physics-y game where you have to flip the eggs and sometimes you have to flip other things in the pan at the same uh-huh. time and make the eggs they want. And there's a story around it, but I, I think I would just as soon <laughs> let people discover that for themselves. It's a guy with some wobbly textures. and Yeah, uh, there's a uh, lot yeah. of like wobbling vertices and what have <laughs> you. Uh, I played through a bunch of, but I've not quite finished, Little Kitty Big City. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, my, Cute my, game. Yeah. I, I, I am enjoying it, and I, I probably will finish it because, I, it, one, it's not that hard, and it, it's not a huge time investment, but two, it's yeah. also very cute. Yeah. Uh, I did play a fair amount of WWE 2K24. That is not going on a list. It's not <laughs> that much better, or in some cases, not quite as good as last year's game. Uh-huh. But it's uh, they're making those games, and they don't suck right now, which is about the best you could ask for. Fair, I guess. Yeah. Um, there's some other sports. I'm actually kind of looking forward to that college football game, not because I like college football, but because I want to see what happens when someone else at EA gets to make a football game that isn't reliant on the years of built up cruft around Madden. What uh what who's making it? It's one of their other internal teams. I okay. it might it might be like a second Tiburon team, I'm not sure, but it is they are apparently basing it I think off some stuff that they had been kicking around for Madden, but they have never been able to fully shift a, over to because they are stuck making Madden every year. Can I, I'm going to ask you a question that mm-hmm. feel free to say, Vinny, I really don't I have no idea because my ignorance, I don't want to drag you down with me, but, um, mm-hmm. some stuff changed in NCAA in terms of being able to make money, right? Yes. Uh, there is now, uh, the possibility that you can get, I think at least on some level, limited sponsorships for, uh, college players. Okay. So we don't know how, or do you know if that translates anyway into the video game form? I think it does, and I don't know exactly what it is that they are doing or how they are doing it. That is, I mean, <clears throat> I'm interested in how they go about it, but I, yeah. as someone who does not follow college football very closely, I have not been looking at the minutia of how they're going about this. But my understanding is the approach is that they, I, I think they will have some players in it, though I, I can't imagine they are going out and licensing all the names mm. that they can't possibly could for a game like that. Interesting. And in the past... Have in the past, had? it was always just generic players. It like, was. Okay. So their stats were usually modeled after real-world players, but they uh-huh. always had generic names and numbers. Interesting. Okay. that that I, I, I think college football and college sports are, are fun and whatever, but that to me is a really interesting twist uh, yeah. uh, this year. There's still a lot to pick apart with college sports and the NCAA and all that. I, again, have not done the research, but I, I more my, my curiosity is much more tied to the idea of a football game somewhat unencumbered by the years of bullshit around Madden. Uh, well, before we get too out in front, mm-hmm. uh, anything else that from previously that you're, uh, you'd love to pick up that jumps to mind? No, that's the majority of it. There's okay. some of the early access stuff I've played here and there, like Hellskate and things like that. I, Hellskate is not all the way there yet. Right. Uh, and, you know, it, like Abiotic Factor and Laysara, Summit Kingdom, like those games are not all the way there yet. But, so, you know, they they at least show some promise. Um, I, A couple of that I still have on my list that I would like to get to. Homeworld 3, mm-hmm. I would like to see. I haven't touched that game yet. That's one that's already out and I would like to play. Um, I still am curious about Sandland. Um, like, yeah, it just didn't seem to really make a splash when it yeah, came out. Yeah, but I'm still curious about it. Um, Tales of Kenzara, remember that one? I, mm-hmm. I still want to try that. Yep. Foundry is another one. Thousand Times Resist is is another one. I keep hearing about that one. And yeah, I played that demo and I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. I I want. I also want to try the. Uh, um, Life Eater. <laughs> mm-hmm. That game just seemed weird enough to get into and try. Not a long game, just and and not a particularly complicated one. Just you know, you got to kind of brace for the darkness. That's all. <laughs> I'm always braced for the darkness. Uh, Rogue Prince of Persia and even Final Fantasy, or sorry, not Final Fantasy, Destiny Two, the mm-hmm. final shape. 
uh, ones that I would like to try. Okay. Now, Alex, mm-hmm. now we look ahead. Now mm-hmm. we look forward. Should we, shall we start with what is coming out on our, not everything that's coming out, but what we're looking forward to mm-hmm. in our list? Because we do have, I'm going to just update this one more time. Some things that are in the near future here. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to pull up my list. Uh, I'm going to start with July since we're pretty much done with June. Um, and just feel free to jump in here if you've got something sure. uh, as we go. But uh, Frostpunk 2, mm-hmm. I want to check out. That's uh, supposedly July 25th. Yep. Um, you are a big Frostpunk fan. I am. I am embracing myself for playing more of that game because that game was deeply depressing, mm-hmm. uh, if also very well made. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the sequel. A Ranger. End of July also. That's that game that made kind of a big splash with its mm-hmm. demo during the Steam Next Fest stuff and, and they showed it during I think the um uh indie was it indie dev days, the days yeah. of the yeah. <laughs> that one. Uh that game looked awesome. Uh and uh, there's some other stuff in July, but I'm I'm not as excited about the Nintendo World Championships as some other folks are. I'm uh, interested, but yeah. Yeah. Some people are really excited about Flintlock. Um that's not too high on my list anything else for july for you oh i got one for sure yeah anger foot okay anger foot <laughs> from devolver uh we saw a demo of this i think last year during oh, steam yes. next fest uh-huh it's like you are basically just a door kicker guy and then also you have guns but it is just a fucking storm a place and just kick dudes around and shoot them game yes i'm and adding it's got that's... a real cartoonish style yes awesome I had forgotten about that one. Not too much else here that I haven't already mentioned, like like college football and whatnot. Uh, everything else, I'll just like I'll poke at at some point. Sure. Yes. Uh, yeah. Again, these are ones that I feel like I'm looking forward to and might uh, make a make a list for me here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna move on into August. Uh, Steam World Heist Two. Excited mm-hmm. to try that out. I'm a big fan of the Steam World games. Uh, that is in the middle of August. Uh, there's that you mentioned this i am your beast Mm -hmm. um you played some of that i really liked what i played of it yeah i don't know if it was hitting for me as hard as it was for you but it does seem interesting um and that's uh also middle of august uh tactical breach wizards that's supposed to be uh uh near the end of august that's a cool one yeah that has a good chance of, of making a list for me and Star Wars Outlaws. Um, God, that is only in August, isn't it? Yep, that's end of August. That definitely, from what I saw, it's right up my alley. I'm a big third person um, adventure game, mm-hmm. you know, sucker. I'll just say, yeah, yeah Star Wars. A mark. Yes, I'm a mark. Uh, that's end of August. Easy chance for that to make a list for me. So so far, stuff could be could get a little sticky on the list. Alex, yeah. uh, we've moved to September. I was trying to think if there's anything in August that I want to add to this. And Madden, eh. <laughs> um, Black Myth Wukong is interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know exactly how that one's going to hit for me, but I want to try it. Uh, I think that's pretty much of this. I, Concord, I'm just not that excited about. S- same here. I, I, I Again, I'm not saying like we won't check these out. This is more yeah. of the like, hey. I'm just things, not that excited. Yeah, things that I'm like really if you could just put these in a priority queue to play them as soon as possible Mm -hmm. uh but how about in september yeah star trucker yeah (laughs) maybe i didn't get a chance to really try that demo unfortunately it was one of those demos that uh expired before i got a chance to play it um but space trucking yeah what am i gonna do not play it if you can if you can use your race your your trucking wheel in space that'd be really something i'd be pretty happy for you shit that would be really something exactly big wide turns in space you know now that i'm looking at september there's actually some stuff here yeah well take me through it what are you what are you looking at so we got star trucker we mentioned that stalker 2 yep if that holds true that is out in the beginning of september and i mean yeah i mean i'm definitely gonna play that Mm -hmm. um i'm sort of curious about this test drive unlimited solar crown game uh-huh. Just because it's test drive and we haven't gotten one of those in a long time. And also it's Atari. Uh-huh. Or I guess Nacon is putting this out. Uh wait, did it, they buy test drive? 
didn't wasn't there something didn't something happen i don't know um they're making test drive again that's a wild thing uh and it's a new one it's a new one i think that is that is kind of bananas uh ufo 50 is is in september and that is that sounds real cool based on what uh brad was telling me about it Uh uh-huh i think that's the main stuff there's that zelda game echoes of wisdom totally which i definitely want to play um and uh there's um uh phoenix springs uh looks mm-hmm. awesome i really want to try that out i think that's the main stuff like hyperlight breaker that's one i definitely want to play as well for sure yes i also uh is that thrasher game the new one from the thumper composer is that when is that out let's see i'm gonna look it up i think it's okay so it says it's coming to vr in december i don't know if that means it's all coming to all platforms on december or not yeah it's so far it just says 2024 here so okay it will launch for MetaQuest and apple vision pro uh on July 25th, but it's coming to Steam VR this December. Oh, weird. Okay. Well, whatever. I yeah. mean, so it's it's coming, I think, actually soon. But also, is it coming to consoles? I think it's coming to consoles and not just VR. Like, do you, can you play it without your VR goggles? I think so. I, I, that's what I would like to know, because here's the thing. I want to uh-huh. play the new game from the fucking Thumper people. Like, that's the thing I want to do. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Let me see if I can grab any more information about it. Thrasher. Bah, 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 bah. Let's see. Because like I... that's like number one with a bullet for me for like games I'm looking forward to this year. Yeah, on, I'm on their Steam page for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, still says 2024 here. Mm-hmm. It looks pretty VR. Does it say? Doesn't say required though. Unless I'm missing something. It could just be that the PR emails I'm getting are mostly about the VR versions. I don't know. Yeah. But, the, uh, what, whatever the case, I want to play it. Yeah. The, I, I don't want to say one way or the other without spending too much time looking into it, but um, the, I don't think the Steam page says you need to have VR. Is, uh, okay. That's what I'm saying. All right. So that is, uh, again, just some stuff. There's Astrobot. Um, mm-hmm. if, did we mention oh, that? I'm definitely going to play the shit out of Astrobot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff. Some stuff they might not even have tagged yet. Uh, and, and Warhammer, uh, space Marine two is, mm-hmm. uh, one that I am super excited to, to check out that man. I'm, I'm buckling up for September. It, I think September is going to be a real, uh, remember how dead it looked like I, I know. three weeks ago. Totally. September is, is pretty jam packed right now. Like honestly, bless companies for being like, Oh yeah, no, 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 we got stuff. Here you go. Yeah. Um, like super Mario party jamboree. And that's look, that's October. And October, I don't have a lot on my list for October. It's not a long October. It's, There's not much. It's yet. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe there'll be more stuff. But um, the Look, Super- a sports game will probably get released in October. Some other big AAA thing will probably get released in October that we don't know about yet. Silent Hill Two is coming out in okay. October. Yeah, that remake. Yeah. Um, there's more stuff for Diablo. There's that Sonic. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Uh-huh. For you. Uh, oh, you know, Life is Strange Double Exposure. Sure. Uh, I- I'm excited for that. Uh, Call of Duty. You heard of it? No, I don't know what that is. Yeah, you don't need to know. It's fine. Um, yeah, so Black Ops 6, that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm moving on to November. Slitterhead. Stop god damn it every time you say it it just makes me unhappy you know that that's an unknown quantity for me it looks real weird based on what we've seen of it so far it does look extremely weird the gameplay i'm gonna say didn't didn't hit with me as much as the vibe i was like um that new assassin's creed that's Mm -hmm. definitely one that we'll be checking out um Almost out of obligation. Um, <laughs> Look, I'm excited to check it out. You're like more in the Assassin's Creed verse than I am. Uh, so you just well, you finished Mirage and I didn't. So yeah, but you've got like uh, you know a billion more hours in the the other open worldy ones. So. Yeah, for some reason I decided to finish all the hundred hour ones. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. Um, Mario and Luigi. Yeah, Mario and Luigi. That brother, I'm brother super ship. looking forward to. Yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm not as much, but uh, I think. I bet I will enjoy it. I, I just I didn't get into the previous ones as much. Mm-hmm. I know they're I've heard they're very good. Uh flight simulator yep. stuff coming in November. Yeah. Assume that's I don't know exactly what uh, the the twenty twenty four version, yep. I guess. That's the that's their new updated one. Yep. Um I'm curious to see. I think most stuff seems like it'll be coming in there from uh mm-hmm. their old one. 
Uh, the Dragon Quest remakes. I'm kind of curious to see three, though. Uh, mm-hmm. I know chronologically that's the first one, but I still mm-hmm. am curious to see one. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now, don't look at December. And then uh, there's December. Just don't. No, don't. There, is there a December? If we're lucky. Is, I think that's... I think we're in for a long December. <laughs> December... <laughs> is there a, is there an will this be a December to remember? I don't think so. This other list I have here also just kind of ends at November, and our list kind of ends. We got the the only thing on our December list right now is Prince of Persia: the Lost Crown coming to the Mac. <laughs> that's yeah, that sounds about right. Um, is there anything else you got for December? No. Yeah, I got jack shit for December. Still a little ways off. Yeah. So plenty of stuff coming up. For the rest of the year, I think we're gonna have a pretty good year. All said, mm. like I, it's it's. I yeah, think you know, what yeah. we will end up with is not a bad, not as bad or dire of a year as maybe we were thinking it was at the beginning of the of the year. But I still think this is going to overall feel like a pretty weak year in the grand scheme of things. <sighs> it's sometimes in a weak year you have really standout games that also just are like you know this in any other given year would still be my favorite game you know Mm -hmm. so i don't know like uh, there's some some real ones like space marine assassin's creed is a big question mark though they have a lot to earn on on that a lot of rep to earn there i really like crypt master so far we'll see we'll see Mm -hmm. this year still could be pretty good there's some stuff that has not gotten a date yet uh, that's still supposed to be 2024. Uh, and we'll, we'll see where those those kind of uh, wind up. Indiana Jones is still supposed to come out this year. Mm-hmm. That's TBD. I think that will probably make it out, but you never know. B- Baby Steps supposed to be this year. God, okay, good. Yes, I want to play that. That's another one that is like super high on my list. Yeah. I forgot that was this year. That's maybe it. Replaced is supposed to be this year. Hmm. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Lot, yeah, but so other uh, stuff will crop up. Yeah, we're halfway through it. Kind of a lighter release calendar, but stuff has popped in there. I think right now what you are seeing is kind of what we thought was going to happen, which is that stuff we didn't know about or stuff that was kind of on the bubble finally got some dates. But right now, the other X factor is what does twenty twenty five look like? Not no. saying we should go look right now because uh, I don't think there's a ton to look at, but. Uh, is it really looking better? Because right now, I think it kind of just looks the same as it did earlier this year. 2025, there was It stuff- does have a Metroid Prime now, which it did not have before. Yeah, and it's got uh, uh, that Donkey Kong Country Returns. Uh, as I said, it has a Metroid Prime, which it did not have before. <laughs> um, that, is that a Wolverine game supposed to be? It is supposed to be next year, I think. Okay. Yeah, you might see Ark Raiders come out. It's possible that Wonder Woman game might come out. I'm going to say that game is not coming out next year. You think that game comes out? Oh, I think it'll come out. I don't think it's coming out next year. Okay. Um, what else might come out? Uh, I don't think uh, 2025. Does Light No Fire, the Hello Games game, is that a does that come out? Or maybe that's just shown again in 2025. That feels like it's probably a ways off. That Blade game might come out. Yeah, that Blade game might come out before the actual Blade movie they're trying to make. When is that? What What is the state no of that No idea, thing? because oh. they just went through their second director and fucking Delroy <laughs> Lindo just dropped out of it, so it's oh. like they're barely keeping their cast together at this point. Uh, um, state of Decay, I don't know, for 2025. That probably just gets shown again. Uh, there's, there's, there's stuff. Uh, while Waiting, that game looked fun. That, that doesn't have a date yet either. Anyway, that's 2025. How about 2026? I don't even want to look. <laughs> Is there, let's see if I've got anything tagged for 20. No, I don't even have that date in our tool yet. For yeah, let's not do that. Uh, that's too far away. I, you know, I hope that's a pretty good a recap of where we are, at least for mm-hmm. coming into this year. Still a lot of stuff I would like to get done uh, and, and finish up. Um, but yeah, plenty of games, plenty of games. I think we take a break. We're going to come back with the news. Um, If you've got any games, uh, and I I do mean this truly and honestly, if you got any games that you think I should check out if you're listening to this, 
you can always hit me up on the discord uh always looking for stuff that i might have missed though um and i think we've been doing a pretty good job keeping up with some of these smaller releases i really should get to that thousand times resist uh i did like that that demo i played of it but we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna come back we're gonna talk about some news so stick around All right, we are back, and it's time for some news here. The news fairly light fair here. We got some uh, some announcements, some releases, some things, some some actual re- not our reporting, but <laughs> us talking about the reporting uh-huh. of reporting. Uh, it's like reporting. It's it's almost like it's uh, it's reporting adjacent. I would never, mm-hmm. I would never. I'm say reporting on reporting for you. <laughs> We're re- repeating things that other people mm-hmm. have reported on. First thing that we're going to repeat that other people have reported on. Remember like when those like Assassin's Creed and Resident Evil were going to come to phones on the new phones because they're super powerful and they're going to make mobile versions of those phones of those uh, games. Mm -hmm. Apparently they didn't do so hot. Uh, There is some reporting out here uh, from uh, let me just double check app figures. No, I am not. A, I am not in the know about App Figure's reputation, but according to them, uh, these games, quote unquote, bomb, bomb. Yeah, and, and their and their kind of take is these markets will remain separate for now. Like if you're yeah. going to spend fifty dollars on a game, you're probably going to buy it on a console and not on your phone. Is their conclusion? Well, especially so much after the fact. Like, it's one thing if you're launching these games simultaneously on mobile, but, like, it seems like the the audiences had already pretty much established themselves on the other platforms. Yeah, so the, the games they looked at here, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil Village, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and Death Stranding, on the uh, one estimate, uh, uh, something like Assassin's Creed Mirage sold through, now because mm-hmm. you can play it for free up to a bit, and then you then you purchase for 50 bucks or whatever the other you know continue going 3000 sell throughs that's uh that's not a lot of units uh to 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 sell no. there uh death stranding doing uh slightly better with 10000 they do have um uh higher estimates cuz you know again these are this is not full reporting these are estimates 23000 but still even on the high end they're saying these are not successes and they are again kind of coming to the conclusion that this is not the way boss no. <laughs> this, it, this, it isn't it, and it, i mean it, it, yeah. it always felt like a little bit of a weird gamble though i understand why you would try this because you know the mobile market is enormous and the phones and the devices are getting a lot better and a lot more capable of managing these kinds of games but similar to the way that nobody should really be watching movies on their iphone i don't think anyone should be playing these kinds of games on their phone i'm not saying you can't I'm not saying it's not. There's no valuable version of this kind of game on a, on a mobile platform, but it just never felt like the way anyone who made these games would ever have intended you to play them. They also make a really, I think, salient point here, and I'm just going to read their quote um, from the reporting. From it says, "quote For me, it seems like these markets will remain separate at least for some time. Players who can afford the flagship mobile device and fifty dollars for games are likely to have the resources to enjoy games on a PC and console as well." Mm-hmm. Going on to say, on the other hand, players who can't afford gaming devices or high performance mobile phones are less likely to make a one time fifty dollar purchase. And I think yeah. that's a pretty good point for this uh, kind of um where this market is at like you do still need a pretty high barrier to entry with the new newest phones to play these games well on top of that like there is just whether it's fair or not there is a built-in i would say understanding that mobile games don't cost that much like normally and most people who have been, you know, conditioned to use these mobile ecosystems sees a price tag like that on a video game and they're like, why the fuck would I do that? The, absolutely. And I think also go, backing a little bit into your other point is we're so far out from the initial release of these games. Yeah. Are you going to buy this game again for $50 so you can so you can play it on your high-end mobile device, right? Mm-hmm. May, maybe not. Again, going with the kind of correlation between if you have this big phone or expensive phone are in the market for these games. You might have, there's a probability you have another place to play this game uh, and played it there. So yeah, kind of interesting. You know, we, we had talked about these games and that 
ability to get a version of these games on high-end phones, I don't know if this sinks that endeavor for now or if, if Capcom and um, you know, Ubisoft continue down it. We'll we'll yeah. see in the future. But I think that's a thing we were never interested in. Mm-hmm. And, but you know, interesting to see. Yeah. Uh all right, moving on here. Shadows of the Erd Tree. DLC. You heard about this? You heard you heard of me? Um Shadow of the Erd Tree uh is out now. A lot of people saying it's very, very tough. Uh-huh. Um I am saving it. We have a poll up. I haven't even looked at the poll on our Patreon. I'll go but, look at it while you're talking. Okay. Uh, I'm saving it to jump in fresh in case that wins our, our patrons choice poll. So I, I'm, I'm not scared to jump in. I'm a little scared to jump in, uh, but I, I'm saving for a fresh run just in case that does win. Uh, and I can go in there and, and see it from scratch, but they have already started patching some stuff to, uh, make the at least the initial on ramp into the game a little easier for folks. Um, mm-hmm. One of the patches they put in uh, it kind of makes the scaling of the initial uh, 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 leveling ramp easier, mm-hmm. so that you can kind of get up to speed a little faster. Maybe be a little bit more competitive in your leveling, and then kind of slows down again towards the back half. Um, but it kind of ramps up. That's a, a patch. Um, now I think that's 1.12.2 is that patch. So if Mm -hmm. you're playing it, it's still super hard. Maybe get that patch in there. Um, the other one that Alex, I thought you would really, cause Uh you were there for this. Remember the end you were there for the end of that, that fight against spoilers. Let's just say a big old monstrous thing in a big glowy space. Yeah. Um, and running around and dodging all those things that were coming at me and kind of having to uh, roll through all of those heat-seeking little ethereal missiles that were coming. Mm-hmm. Well, what if you had your horse there? That might make things a little easier. That would have made things pretty cool. That would have been cool to have your horse yeah. there. Well, now you can have your horse there. They, oh, they sick. Pa- yeah. They patched that in. Apparently, you could just have Torrent uh, in your in your final uh, boss fight there. That seems cool. That's mm-hmm. all right. I'm okay with that. Did I wish it were there from the beginning? Maybe, but I'm okay. It has been very funny. I'm just going to say, as someone who, you know, did not play nearly enough Elden Ring to actually get into this DLC, it has been very funny watching the response to this thing from people, (laughs) because I feel like it has been a lot of journalists actually saying, yeah, it's real punishing, but it's also really good. And a lot of people who are usually the kind of people who grouse about how journalists, so it games on easy mode, oh, they don't (laughs) want to play the hard games. Saying this is too hard, <laughs> like like you've made it too hard. Yeah, um, I don't know. I it could also just be a bunch of people that got very reliant on one particular play style and that not working very well in this DLC. Who can say? Oh, but whatever. I hope that's not it's the just. Case. But the responses are just it, it's all over the place and actually not what I was expecting coming out of this. Right the 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 baby mode for journalists. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I, I again, I haven't tried it yet. I'm a little, <laughs> as someone who's not great at these games, but still kind of enjoys them or banging their head against them and trying to figure out the way to power through. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Yeah, I'll play. I'll play in this. Uh, you know, uh, uh, easier, uh, easier patch they put in, slightly easier. It doesn't sound mm-hmm. like it's, it's like easy mode or anything. Like no. I said, they're just kind of changing the way the levels work. Well, they rebalance stuff all the time in those games, and yeah. you know, especially when they've done DLC, they've done that before. I think so. It's it's understandable. So just again, quick note: you do have to lo- make sure you're logged in to get this patch and make sure everything is is working. Uh, again, one point twelve point two is what you're looking for there. Mm-hmm. Um. That's it. A little small, small patch there. I'm just trying to get people to not maybe bounce off and throw their controllers through the window. Uh, another little bit of news here that I thought was interesting to see. Uh, we'll start with it's a little Capcom block here. So the original fi- uh, Resident Evil mm-hmm. had a PC release. It did. And that PC release is coming to GOG. Uh, and you could play it in all its funky glory. Great. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to, I think we, you know, we've been talking about, should they remake again, Resident Evil one? I think they should. I think they should. No, there is that remake that is very faithful to Resident Evil one. I think they should redo it in the style they did two in. I just don't 
need that game again in any form. I think they should do full FMV in for the beginning. Redo it. Uh, I don't really have any interest in going back to original PC version of Resident Evil, but I am, I'm glad it's there. As someone who likes sure. to see things housed, stationed somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Available I'm, somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad it'll be up there. Uh, but that maybe pales in comparison to this other Capcom news, which was, Alex, mm -hmm. they're making a Dead Rising remaster. All right. Uh-huh. Let's talk about this. Yeah. That's not Frank West. That's somebody wearing a Frank West mask. <laughs> That's, That's not my Frank West. I don't they put up a trailer for this or a teaser. It's not the same voice acting. Oh, is it also a different voice I actor? I don't think it's the same voice actor. Hmm. Unless this voice actor came in and did a totally different performance, it does not sound like the one I remember. You know, it's always been a weird franchise. It doesn't feel like it should be a franchise. And I don't say that because I think Dead Rising sucks or anything. It super doesn't. But it feels like the kind of weird one-off that should have maybe gotten a sequel many, many years later when someone was like, ah, oh, Dead Rising, right? We put that out. But somehow there's been like five of these. Yeah, most, most of them are all right. Yeah, but they're they're fine. But the thing is, it doesn't feel like a game that should have spawned that many sequels. It feels like a sort of thing that people, like a subset of people, should have loved dearly and then never gotten another one for like twenty years. <laughs> like this should be, yeah. this should have been the this thing. should have been the first time anyone mentioned Dead <laughs> Rising in the last like three presidential terms. <laughs> I am uh, I am looking up um, the voice actor from dead rising and it seems like you might be right this is i think it is a different actor i think um to which point i say why even do this then yeah why what, i wonder what happened here i don't know maybe they had a falling out with that actor or something who can say but maybe um, I, I just i you can play dead rising right now if you want to it's available it's a places there there, there are platforms that will will allow you to download it and play it right now but can you play this deluxe remaster I got to know what they're deluxing on this because mm. if it's just we at made more buildings in the town and there are more zombies, sure, but that doesn't necessarily like excite me. Mm. If it's like, hey, we added a bunch of new content, like new weapons, new other stuff, maybe some of the quality of life stuff from later sequels, then I'll at least give it a shot. But I don't know, man. Dead Rising, the first one, is just such a weird singular thing. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, it was trying to push some boundaries with the tech at the time with all those zombies. I'm kind of curious. Kind of a punishing design, but like an interesting <laughs> one. Yeah, I will be curious to see if they do like. Um, Is the clock there? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you, the clock has to be there for that first one. I don't think you can get rid of that. Can you turn it off? If you can, then why are you even playing Dead Rising? Honestly, because I want to. I want to kill five thousand zombies. Well, yeah, you can still go do that in three right. days. I want to get the Mega Buster. I can't. Oh, it's very stressful. It's so Listen, stressful. that game stressed me out too. Okay, like I, I definitely ran up against that clock the the first times I was playing. I reviewed that game, and I still am like, yeah, you know what? This is not how I would have designed this game, but that is how this game should be. <laughs> yeah, I, look, come on. Are you aren't you curious about this though? Of course, I'm curious about yeah. it, but I just, I just, I think my need for it is not that high. It's it is. Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, so it is just yeah, DRDR, DRDR, which is Durder. Dur <laughs> that does look like Frank West's face a little. Dur <coughs> yeah. Durder, Durder. Uh, yeah, I, I I've don't covered know. Durders. You know, I've covered Durders. You know, I I haven't kept up. This is probably a better bat Brad question with with some of the later Dead Rising to know if they have changed Frank West's voice in other iterations that he's been he in. Came back, yeah, in some four? stuff. Yeah, um, I don't remember if they used the same actor in that one or not. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. It's Capcom. They, they like putting out their remakes. They're very successful right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're going to have a Monster Hunter, which mm -hmm. will definitely put some money in the bank. That's Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. There is a trailer out for that that you can go check out. Uh, no release date on that. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Frank West. He is just kind of weird looking in this, though. He was always weird looking. Is the he thing. Was, he, it's just yeah. that now when you would give it that fidelity, it's like, oh, he's extra weird looking. 
maybe that's the problem. Uh, this one I, I put on here cause I was pretty excited about, uh, Atari 50. We talked about the, uh, the, uh, the, the collection stuff from digital clips before when we were talking about the llama soft stuff. Atari 50, I think is one of their best, if not mm. the best one they have done. Uh, and they're doing more of it. You're going to get 39 more games, uh, which should be available as DLC. If you own the original, uh, you're going to get two more timelines. Let me just double check the names of those again. Mm -hmm. uh, the Wider World of Atari mm -hmm. and the First Console War. And that's what I want. New interviews, vintage ads, historical artifacts. This is great. This is, yeah. uh, uh, you know, hopefully priced right and ready to move. I want to see more of this. There's also going to be a physical version of the PS5 uh, for the PS5 and Switch. Switch. Uh, and a special steelbook edition that can come that comes with miniature arcade marquee signs and a bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah, neat. Go for it. Yeah. Hey, that's still their best one of these. Yep. Now Atari owns in television, so I don't know. Put some more. Some, put some of that stuff in there too. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to see uh, more with the first console war which apparently is going to focus on the Atari and television stuff. Mm -hmm. So now that they could just go out there and they own both brands and I don't know, make it heated. I want to see what's in there. Uh, very curious. I'll be checking in on that when that comes out. Uh, when is, does that have a date? I don't think that does have a date yet, but it could be. They just enough. announced that thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, 39 more games. So, uh, but you know, the games are not, are here neither here nor there it's really all the interviews and assets uh october 25th there's a date for it there it is october october 25th ps5 xbox uh switch everything 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 uh all right finally this last bit of news i've got here mm -hmm. beyond good and evil uh -huh. is getting its 4k update this got leaked we kind of uh -huh. knew this was coming um, it's officially here or announced it's 20th anniversary edition. And you're probably like, Vin, who cares? <laughs> I care. I like beyond good and evil. I'm, okay. I'm in for the 20th anniversary edition. Fine. Let's do it. But Alex, apparently, mm -hmm. apparently there is a thing in here that it's tying into beyond good and evil too. That is <laughs> some kind of proof. proof you of can life. say that. <laughs> this, You're welcome what, to say those words out loud. If you want, I ain't buying shit. There is a quote, exclusive new mission end quote with a quote narrative link to beyond good and evil too. Now nah, fuck off. Fuck off. Showing quote, Ubisoft's enduring commitment to the franchise. Okay, well, enduring is a really funny way to describe that. That's a very funny word to use. This is from their release, okay? This is from the their- The Sisyphean <laughs> effort to bring you beyond good and evil too. You want to see that pig guy, right? This is- I. We will kill thousands of our own employees <laughs> if it means we get to put this out. I just- I don't know. Is it happening? I don't know, man. No, <laughs> no. And, and before anyone gets on me and uh, so it's, it's like writing this down so you can yell at me when it actually does come out. Mm. The thing you saw before, the thing they debuted, the one that Michelle Ansel was working on. Uh -huh. I'm telling you right now, dead in the face. Uh -huh. That does not exist. The thing they may have gone on to make, which may have pivoted off that thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> could exist. Will it? Hands in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I look, it's it's kind of a look, it is a weird thing. Beyond, we should say this 20th anniversary thing will come out on June 25th. It's 4K edition with a bunch of other stuff in it, and that is gonna be on pretty much everything. Wait, June 25th? June 25th, which is that is yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> as at the time of this so recording. Is that out? Uh I guess that is out. Um I did not see this thing on any list anywhere. The 20th anniversary edition. 
Yeah, I can buy it. How much is it? Because this doesn't. Have, this story doesn't have a price. Twenty dollars. Uh, the physical version though will not be out until July twelfth. So, um, yeah, I you know cool. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna hold my breath for Beyond Good and Evil two. As no, I no, should you shouldn't be. because you will die. Because I will be dead. You uh, would have died several times over if you've been doing that. Honestly, I thought they did a Beyond Good and Evil remaster already. It's, maybe it wasn't on PC. Or maybe it wasn't 4K. Yeah, I don't fucking know, man. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I want them to stop saying these words. You are no longer, you Ubisoft, are no longer allowed to use the words beyond good or evil in any combination until this sequel has a release date. The last official thing they said apparently was in 2021. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. That's like... I remember, I think, when they mentioned that. and It was like, ah, we're not done. Yeah. That's kind of a long time ago for not even a word of it. But anyway, it's just kind of as an official thing. Look, there's some kind of tie-in. Let's, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, or maybe I won't. I don't know. TBD. But mm-hmm. that is the news uh, for this week. We do have an email address. It is podcast at nextlander.com. Podcast at nextlander.com. Now, Brad Shoemaker usually pulls the emails together, but we had an unexpected no Brad Shoemaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I am just going to take... Maybe one or two here. Uh huh. And the one I'm going to take uh, that I'm just going to quickly scan through and say this one here, uh-huh. from Travis in Fargo. And Hi, Travis. Travis. Travis asks, what's the best bean? Ooh. What's, yeah. What's the best bean? Ooh. A has bean? No. Mm. Okay, good. Great. A human bean? <sighs> I could stop. All right, let's let's take this seriously. Okay, let's treat this with the seriousness it deserves. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, so we put my bean hat on. I'm yeah. gonna think with my bean. Roll that beautiful bean podcast. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So if we're talking edible beans, and we're not right. talking about like coffee beans, which are you know obviously oh, like a okay, thing that okay. you know you, sure. you certainly need for for coffee, and I do love my coffee. Oh, yeah. I'm just talking about like beans you would normally put in food. Okay. I love a good black bean. Just a straight up black bean. Black bean and any kind of like, you know, like Latin American preparation is inevitably very good. All good with refried. Love a good kidney bean and chili. Uh But black beans are the thing I'm like, if you are offering multiple bean options, I will always choose the black bean. Okay. I'm trying to think of pinto bean. The the beans I know. Mm Mm-hmm. I think pinto beans are mostly what they make like refried beans out of. Well, I do like, I do like a refried bean. I do yeah. like a like a can of like refried like pork yeah. and beans. That's like yeah. a good yeah. Um kidney beans. Great and chili. I don't really like eating them too much like on their own, but like when mixed in with the right stuff. Mwah. Yeah. Um like a is a, a lentil count as a bean? Is it a legume? I don't know. I think it is. Does I'm not, I'm really trying to keep this within a narrow framework yeah. of bean ass bean bean ass bean um, yeah because like there's too many weird side beans you could try and pull in here what's a like a what's like a white bean like in a white bean bean soup what are those oh you know, like I have to look up types of beans I feel like this is gonna open some kind of door into being like did you know the peanuts a bean be like <sighs> kind of fuck you I can't do this. All right, here's what we got. Different kinds of beans. I'm sure this is AI generated. Here we fucking go. <laughs> I'm sure you're um, right. A lot uh, of people wonder what kinds of beans there are. There yeah. are many kinds of beans in the world. So yeah, black beans, black chickpeas, black eyed peas, canary beans, cannelli beans, chickpeas, chickpeas Christmas okay. lima beans, cranberry beans. Okay, look. I. You say a cranberry 20, bean? Yeah, I guess. Uh, here's an article from America's Test Kitchen. 25 types of dried beans and how to use them. Okay. okay. This, is, this is getting too far for me. Uh, okay, look, pinto beans, chickpeas. Mm-hmm. Ca- uh, I love a chickpea, to be yeah, fair. I like a chickpea. Um, cannelli, cannelli beans look like I the- think white beans are just white beans. White beans, okay. Kidney beans, lentils are in here. Lentils I'm not a huge fan of, so I'm going to put those down. Lima beans I don't love. Uh, uh, fava beans. <laughs> mung beans in the right dish I'm all for. I don't know if I've had a mung bean. Have it's, I had a mung bean in like- Maybe more often in like Asian cuisine. Yeah, right, yes. Fava beans, eh. Uh huh. Just I can't think of fava beans. It was just mm-hmm. Silence of the Lambs. Soybeans, love them. Sure, a navy bean. Mm. I don't know if I've had any red red beans. I I've had like, plenty of red beans, like red beans and rice. Yeah, that's yeah. good shit. I feel like red beans and black beans maybe are a little interchangeable for me. Yeah, 
I don't know if I have a pink, if I had a pink bean. There's now I'm existed. in the, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm in the like What's weird What's an Izuki beans. bean? I don't know. I mean, I just saw that one too. What's a F-A-Y-O-T? Fayo bean? Fayot? Fayot bean? I don't know. Uh, I'm now realizing that my bean knowledge is nowhere near as expansive as I once believed it was. Yeah. Ask me what a fava bean tastes like. No idea. No idea. I mean, ask me what any bean tastes like. It tastes like a bean. I don't know. They all taste the same, really. Yeah. Fa- well, not not exactly, but you know, it there's there's a general flavor of bean, yes. Favorite bean? The one that's in front of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one listening to this podcast. That's, that's right. Uh well there you go. There's your question. Yeah, Favorite? black beans, delicious. You you know what? I might go with black bean. Uh for my favorite bean. It's just a, it's a workman's bean. It just does so a lot good. of work. And it, yeah. Uh, good question. Good question. Dang um, it. okay. I'm going to take this other one from Travis just mm-hmm. cause it's right here. Ready? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say past or present. Mm-hmm. I'm going to open this up. Celebrity crush. Past or present. I, I have, I have said mine before and it is Karen Allen. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, smitten. Smitten. Was I. Yes. Oh boy. I had Jennifer Jennifer Connolly smitten. Oh yeah. I mean yeah, yes. That was definitely one of mine. <laughs> um I had a real one owner writer crush for a while. Okay. Yeah. Um I when I was about eh, probably around the time Leon and the professional came out cuz I was about the same age as her. I definitely had like a Natal- Natalie Portman crush. Okay. I just I just showed my kids the everyone uh, scene from uh, uh, the professional mm-hmm. uh, to tie it back in because that's I'll, maybe the one scene you could show them uh, because we, we were pl- we've been playing a lot of vampire survivors co op and uh, there is a thing in there where everyone gets the uh, ability increase mm-hmm. and we all shout everyone every time mm-hmm. it comes up and I was like I should probably show you why I'm yelling everyone um, every time that comes up and they're like mm-hmm. oh okay. I don't know. It's, it's out of context. This is very weird. and We don't get it. Uh, but yes, sure, sure. I had a big Lucy Liu thing for a while. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. There's others I'm sure that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head, but those were just kind of some of the ones that I remember. I can't think of any current celebrity crushes that I'm like, you know. Well, you're married for one thing. Yeah, but like you can still have a crush. Uh, yeah. I, but now I just see people and I'm just like, I think I just said it's less of a crush. Like, I'm not going to put their poster on my wall kind of thing, mm-hmm. but more of just like, that is just a handsome person. Like, like hot damn. That's yeah. just a hot damn right yeah. there. Yeah. Like, oh, like that is just a good looking human. That, yeah. Like, that is just like, uh, like, look, do I have a crush on Idris Elba? No. I, I kind of do. But, but do I do it that whole time when I was playing through Cyberpunk yeah. is like, this is just a good digital representation of this hunk of beef. I mean, <laughs> this- Idris Elba's fucking hot, dude. Yeah. So, like, uh, I think I'm more in my admiration phase mm-hmm. of just, like... <laughs> Respectfully adm- admiring from a distance. That's right. Instead yeah. of, like, why do, you have a, why do you have all these pictures up on your wall? No reason. It's okay. Um, Margo Kidder, Can you leave the room now? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> right I, th- I thought you were going grocery shopping. Uh-huh. Yeah. I thought you were leaving. I was gonna say Margot Kidder, but really, I think that's just not to be any any slight to Margot Kidder. That might just be run off from my crush on Karen Allen. Uh, at oh, the time. sure, there is definitely a similarity in <laughs> yeah. look there, a hundred percent, a little bit, a little bit. And I should probably say Karen Allen. I don't know if it's as much uh, my childhood crush on Karen Allen as much as Karen Allen in Indiana Jones, like well, that character. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that's the only movie she's good in or anything, but yeah. that is definitely the one that definitely hit the most teenage boys. Yes. They like weren't the- all out there watching Starman, you know? Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it was definitely Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, and she's just a cool, tough, like, fun character. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, good question, childhood crushes. I am curious if my son will have uh, any, like, hey, can we watch this movie? And they're like, oh, yeah, I don't know why. Any, like, mm-hmm. childhood crushes. Uh, cause he's about at that age where I feel like that stuff starts popping up of like, Oh yeah, no, that person, mm-hmm. that person is, is, 
you know. Notice you're putting a lot of bikini photos up on your wall. Uh, anything, anything going on here? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I feel like he still, if asked, like, hey, anybody, you know, that you find, like, you know, dead. No. No. I like, I just, anybody, Come any, on. Like, any, like, you know, any actors, actresses, uh, you know, anybody. Musicians. Dead. Just stop. Stop asking. Okay, I will. Done. Right. Done. We'll not ask. We'll not ask. You know, I can see your search history. What? Mm-hmm. Nothing. <laughs> 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 Nothing. Anyway, that's the... <laughs> what would you say? God, I'm uh, so glad we didn't grow up in this era. Oh, yeah. Um, that's going to do it for the emails. We'll have more emails. Send them in to podcast at nextlander.com. Podcast at nextlander.com. That's going to do it for this podcast. Alex Navarro, thank you very much. Thank for you. joining me, for rattling through, doing some audibles. I think we we were planning on uh, initially going through. Brad has some more stuff from um, what he saw during Summer Game Fest. We'll get to that when Brad is back. Uh, mm-hmm. I do believe he might be out next week as well, but he still has a couple of other games that the embargoes are either up or with spacing out stuff to talk about. So um, that was initially we we're going to go into some of that stuff. So thank you for joining me on our retrospective of the year of 2024 in the past and what's coming up in, in the future. Uh, we got a bunch of other stuff going on, though. We, like I said, we have our patrons' choice. Did you look at the poll? Did you look at the I poll? I did. Uh, what's, what's up there? What's, what's happening? Right now, those uh, Twin Peaks videos and related material are currently winning. Oh, hell yeah. All right. Well, if, if that winds up being the case and those win, I will definitely jump into Shadow of the Erd Tree in the near future. I'm excited to see the Twin Peaks stuff. And related uh, miscellaneous stuff. I, none of it is going to be like hugely important to our watching, but I think it will be an interesting cross section of material. Yeah, because as of this recording, we have not watched the finale yet. So um, no. So and like, when um, we do that stream, if that wins, I'm going to tell you right now: just don't look at the chat. Don't look at the chat. Okay, but nothing. You and you Brad show- just should not watch. Look at the chat. I'll look at it for you. And nothing in there would be spoiler in the in the not that I'm going to show. show. Yeah. No. Got not it. that anything I'm going to show. Um. Uh, yeah, so I guess viewers be warn- warned, too, if that wins, and we do it, beware in the chat. Uh, oh, I'll make a big statement at the beginning so yes. everyone knows what we <laughs> what we have in store for us. Maybe uh, maybe we can uh, open up uh, temporarily on the Discord or something a spoiler chat for people mm-hmm. who want to just go in there. Well, there is that Black Lodge thread we now have in oh, the Discord, which great. is the separate uh, What You Watching thread, which we keep for uh, people who want to talk about Twin Peaks beyond where the t- the watch cast currently is okay so that could be a spoiler place yeah so it's not like a live chat but it is a discord room or thread or forum or whatever the hell <laughs> we're calling those things now <laughs> okay. uh, but but if you go in there there's a bunch of like-minded individuals who are going to be talking about all the spoilers if that's what you want to do yeah okay cool so maybe maybe we can push people into that room if they want to just openly talk about the spoilers without having to yeah. tag everything i'm still going to keep you guys out of all the chat rooms though. oh yeah that's no, just, it, just for safety yeah. sake yes yeah. Yes, I will stay out of there. Um, so that might happen. Uh, again, if you can go vote for that, uh, if you're in the right tier over on the Patreon, that's patreon.com slash nextlander. Uh, we have the uh, uh, Ramble cast is up there. I just finished mm-hmm. editing Never Been a Better Podcast, which was super fun, which is Abby uh, did a cross-country trip, and she shares her journey with uh, Bacalar and with Alex and with myself, uh, which was super fun. She's a great storyteller, and uh, it's a lot of fun to join her on her trip. Uh, um yeah, uh, as she tells her trip, we didn't actually go mm-hmm. with her on her trip. Uh, so you can check that out over on the Patreon. Uh, we'll have a Planorama coming up. Uh, we got the Q and A is up there now. All of this stuff over at Patreon dot com slash Nextlander, where you can find a tier that's right for you. You can support us. You keep us going. That's where the majority of our uh, uh, funding comes from, from over on Patreon. So we do appreciate everybody who can chip in and help keep the lights on over at Nextlander. Mm-hmm. There is one tier there, though, that gets their names read on this here stream. I'm going to read those names for you right now. Starting with Sean Miller, RRE. Infelicitous Rips, Kelly F., Brian Lucier, Skywarp, John Hubbard, Evan Cook, Mark Wilhelm, Jerry Lee, Kind Deidre, Gary Pejke, Robert Fisher, Bunny Fiend, Jad Rita, Statics, Fantasticasm 89, Razgriz 2, Brian Murphy, Randy Duax, Andrew Tiebkin, Alex Wu, it's me, JP, Edward Chick, 
Andrew Slosky, Steve Lynn, Matthew Herrig, David Campos, and Tyler Trees. Those are our mysterious benefactors for this week. Thanks to all of them, and thanks to everyone, again, who has supported us over at patreon.com slash nextlander. That's going to do it for this podcast. Uh, I'm trying to think if I, I did do a different podcast last night, but I don't know if I should say what it is or not. It's not a huge surprise. Leave it a surprise. I'll leave it a surprise. It was a fun one. Alex, you've probably been in this situation where at some point somebody said, remember when you said this podcast was going to be around two hours uh-huh. at hour three? <laughs> then, uh, they were like, you know, time flies when you're having fun, when you're having fun. Uh, so I'll leave it up to the owners of that podcast to announce that's when it is time. But Alex, thank you very much for joining me here. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thanks everybody for tuning in and listening. Like I said, tune in at the end of the week for our patrons choice stream, uh, 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 on Friday. You can check that out. And I will be streaming on Thursday, this Thursday with, um, some more cyberpunk stuff as we near the end of our cyberpunk adventure. I'm going to try and scoop up as much as I can. Uh, times may change on that if you're listening to this uh, uh, tomorrow, but uh, I'll try and get in there when I can, earliest I can. Our schedule's been a little funky, so we're trying to figure out exactly when we can plot stuff in and, and take care of everything. Uh, but yes, join us for that. Thanks again, Alex, and thanks again, everybody, for listening, and we'll be back next week. <laughs>